Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, this is actually my second take of this video because um, on the first take, uh, it was actually the first words that I had spoken aloud all day, and uh, I sounded like I had just emerged from a crypt, and uh, it was it was it was actually even it even felt strange for me. Um, so in this video, we are going to talk about how you can use indexed views to get around some of the limitations with computed columns and indexes in SQL Server. It's going to be a lot of fun, assuming I don't start sneezing at any, any moment now. So um, the, the big problem with computed columns is uh, you, you can't create filtered indexes on them. You, you just can't do it. It's impossible. Uh, you just get errors. It's, it, it's actually kind of a miserable experience. Like many other things in SQL Server, it is, it is, it is pure pain and agony and suffering. So <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. We're going to create this table called indexed view, which is not confusing at all, is it? It's sort of like uh, when, when you have a table with TBL in it, and then uh, eventually something happens where you have to convert that to a view. It hits like a table with a different definition, and now you have a view called TBL something. And it's the same deal, right? So that's, that's good times. And uh, we're going to stick a little bit of data into this table just to make it semi-realistic. Uh, it's only about 15,000 rows. Not, not a lot. That, that's okay. We, we don't need a lot to sort of prove through the concept. Now, the <clears throat> problem, like I was saying, is that uh, you cannot create a computed column on an indexed view. <clears throat> I'm sorry, on a filtered index. So what it says here is uh, the filtered index n cannot be created on table dbo.indexed view because the column not fizzbuzz in the filter expression is a computed column. Help, so helpful. Rewrite the filter expression so that it does not include this column. Well, it's the only column that I care about filtering, so what, what should I do there, Microsoft? Tell, tell, me, tell me what I should do. Illuminate me. I would, love to, I would love to know more. The one thing that I want to do can't be done. Why, why bother telling me to, to, to do something else? So here, 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 here comes the index view. And before, before I create this, I, I, should, I should pause for a moment because, uh, you know, again, like, like most things in SQL Server, there are agony and pain and suffering. Uh, and index views and their limitations are, are certainly a large source of pain and agony and suffering for many SQL Server users. Um, I, 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 you, they can be used to, to great effect in very simple scenarios, uh, and, and perhaps, um, perhaps their limitations are a feature and not just pure, you know, uh, unabashed laziness, uh, because they, they do kind of prevent people from putting really crazy things into index views, and maybe index view maintenance for those things would be tough. Um, but it is, it is uh, a real shame that even basic things like min and max uh, aren't supported by index views. Uh, le legend and lore has it, it's because Connor Cunningham decided one day that uh, he decided when, when they were putting index views in that uh, having an additional non-clustered index to support the min and max was just too much. So, uh, we, don't ha so we don't get that now. Great. Connor is working on CPU instructions and we're still suffering with not being able to put min and max into an indexed view. So it's a happy time for us, us, us leftovers in SQL Server. It's grand. Uh, so yeah, we can't create this. We get enough errors. We, no matter how many times we click this, we get errors. Now, the, the main place that I still find um, a, 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 enough valid use for indexed views is on standard edition. And they're great for standard edition because Microsoft uh, has hobbled column store in batch mode on standard, in standard edition to the point of utter disrespect for their users. So, uh, like, like well, often it's just like, we can try it, what's the point? It's, it's just, it's like nothing. It's, it's pointless. Uh, so index views can be good because, you know, where column store in enterprise edition excels at uh, being able to uh, do large aggregations very quickly, you can often use index views to pre-compute those aggregations. Um, index views do, of course, have you know maintenance downsides, but you know even in enterprise edition workloads where there's some you know something about the workload or something about the table or something about uh, I don't know a million other things that make using column store indexes impractical or impossible, uh, index views can even still be good there. But you know. 
<clears throat> in this case, we're, we're using it to get around a row store limitation with filtered indexes. So let us continue. Uh, we are going to create a view, and I, I just want to show you this part first because this part is interesting too. We're going to create this view called computed column. Again, not, a, not at all confusing. Uh, and we're going to attempt to create a uh, computed call, uh, attempt to create a filtered index on that. Now, we're going to get a completely different error here. Uh, we are going to, it's going to say, you know, let's, let's put this, let's format this a little bit for easy reading. Right? We don't, we don't want, we don't want to make reading any harder than it is. We are, we are high school dropouts after all. Uh, so the filtered index can't be created on computed column because it is not a user table. It is an indexed view. Index views in general cannot have filtered indexes on them. So, uh, but at least this error, me error message is somewhat helpful. Consider creating an index view with the filter expression incorporated in the view definition. Well, boy, howdy. We can, we can do that, can't we? We can, we can follow those instructions. Those are actually useful instructions. Whoever wrote that error message, uh, you deserve some, kind of, some sort of gold medal. I hope, I hope that you have gotten a good job after that. So we're going to put our, our filter expression into the index view, and we are going to quote this part of the index creation out, and we are going to recreate both indexes. Now, this gets us where we want to go. Uh, we have uh, essentially an indexed, materialized, uh, pre-computed thing filtered to the stuff that we care about, right? So the, like that computed column. And the big problem, of course, was that we can't create a filtered index on a computed column. We can create the index view to, to materialize that. And, uh, you know, under most circumstances, as long as you have reasonable supporting backing indexes, between you know the tables and the index view and the index view, and you know just being honest, I, I I'm really not a big fan of index views that span multiple tables. I'd rather create like two <laughs> like index views uh, with like one table a piece and then them join two tables in an index view most of the time. Uh, it's it's a tre treacherous treacherous set of circumstances. Uh, but now we have what we want there, and. Uh, part of this is going to be because of the small data set that I'm using. Um, we don't get a very, you know, uh, interesting, we don't get an interesting enough query plan just selecting some data from the table or just getting a count from the table uh, matched on the not fizzbuzz column being equal to zero, right? We just, it's just, it's not 15,000 rows. It's just like in, in real life, if someone was like, we need an index view on this 15,000 row table. I would probably punch them. Uh, it's it's not not reasonable. So when we run this query and we look at the execution plan, we will see something that we've we've seen in a few other examples and videos that I've recorded here before. Uh, this query is uh, is, is uh, at the mercy of uh, both getting a trivial plan and simple parameterization. We can tell because uh, the the literal value that I, I used before has been replaced with at one and and that we have all these silly brackets that are completely unnecessary uh, injected into our, our code, and we have a complete lack of as in the aliasing, which is something that I would never do because I'm a professional human being. So in order to get around that, um, you know, you can always do the, the old one equals select one trick. Uh, if, if you're going to, if, you th if you're thinking about typing in the comments, why are you using one equals select one? I have bad news for you. Uh, type it into a search engine instead, and you will get both a blog post and a video where I explain it. So you're not, if you ask in the comments, you're out. I'm banning you from my channel for life. Kidding. I'm not. I, I, will, I, probably will, I will probably make fun of you a little bit, though. So if I run this <clears throat> and I look at the execution plan, uh, oh, yeah, well, actually, I should backtrack a little bit. What I meant to say up here is that because... Uh, of all that. You can notice that instead of using the uh, index view that I created, we're using the base table, which is named index view, right? So that's the, that's the thing we don't like there. But if we add in the one equals select one, we avoid the uh, simple, we avoid the trivial plan and the simple parameterization. We switch to using the uh, index view that I created called computed column, which is precisely what we wanted. But an important thing um, particularly for standard edition users, the much, much, much abused 
left behind standard edition users is that uh, you usually want to include the no expand hint. Um, standard edition does nothing for like computed column or rather does nothing for like index view matching. Uh, the no expand hint is necessary in like 99 point nearly infinite nine um, uh, cases where I need where I want why we need to, I need to make sure that the index view is routinely hit rather than the base table uh, base, base table behind the index view. The other really important thing, even for enterprise edition users, when it comes to indexed views and using the no expand hint, is this is the only way for SQL Server to create system statistics on uh, columns in the indexed view. If you don't put no expand in there, you don't get any, st like it doesn't create histograms for you. It's really weird. I don't get it personally, but it is, it is, it does appear to be the case. So um, sometimes in query plans, you might see a warning that says like, uh, like, uh oh, columns with, with no, no columns with no statistics or something like that. Um, it's a very misleading warning. Uh, sometimes it'll happen because it's a index view and you don't have statistics uh, because of the, you didn't use no expand when you queried it. Other times it's because you don't have uh, statistics in the very specific column order. <laughs> That, that SQL Server would want, and so like you do have statistics on these columns. It's just not the exact. It's it's almost like a like like a missing index request that's wrong. It's like a missing statistics request that's that's wrong because you you do have statistics. It's just not the specific statistics that SQL Server wants. So, what what did we learn today? What did what did what did we learn? Uh, SQL Server has a lot of bizarre limitations. Um, you know, uh, you can create computed columns, you can create filtered indexes, you just can't create filtered indexes on computed columns. Uh, you can create indexed views, but you can't create filtered indexes on indexed views. You can apply filters to indexed views and then create whatever indexes you want on that index, on that view, clustered and then whatever non-clustered indexes. Uh, but index views are, 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 a tough, are a tough sell in a lot of cases. Um, you know, in, in the, with the uh, exception of people on standard edition who are have who you know can't who have like a just beat to death version of um, column store and batch mode available, you know that's that's no good. And then uh, like index views can be good there. And then if you're on, on enterprise edition, but for some reason column stores and no, uh, column stores are no go for you for whatever other you know weird pathological reasons uh, you have in your database, whether it's you know, the, the t data types, cursors, you know, other kind of constraints and stuff. Uh, then that's another, you know, an another story. Column store does have some limitations, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I, am, I am still rather fond of column store most of the time. I'm rather, rather, rather sunny about column store. It's got, got some good stuff going for it. And Microsoft actually actively seems to be working on column store, which is a nice change of pace from... Uh, index views, filtered indexes, partitioning, you know, a billion and a half other features that have been left at sort of like V1, V2 with no real investment afterwards. So, uh, you know, Column Store at least, at least has that going for it. Right? It's, it's okay there. So, there we go. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you like this sort of SQL Server content, um, then you should you, you you can you can like the video, you can comment on the video, you can subscribe to my channel, and you can join over four thousand other lovely data darlings and getting uh, getting notified every time I, I publish one of these videos, so that uh, you can you can you can stay on the I don't know I, I'd call it the cutting edge, but <clears throat> gosh, is SQL Server the cutting edge anymore? I often wonder. I often wonder. <laughs> Uh, it's, a, it's a fun thing, fun thing to ponder, fun thing to consider. Why, what happened to SQL Server? Why is, why is everything seemingly spinning out of control? So, uh, you can do that, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you just like looking at me, maybe you just like the, 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 the sound of my voice. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is that gets people to subscribe, but if you do that, you get notified, and I'll get uh, larger subscriber counts, and larger subscriber counts are, are kind of my fetish at this point. So, uh, you know, the, the, the higher that number goes, the happier I am. And the happier I am, the more I record. 
So it's like a good feedback mechanism. Right? You subscribe, I record. We're good, right? Every, everyone, it's a happy ending for everyone. All right. Uh, apparently, I have a, a call starting soon, so I'm, I'm going to go do that. Uh, and um, that, that, that call is with a nice client who is, who is paying me money uh, to, to, so that I can record these things for free. On a, uh, a, there, aren't, there aren't even commercials on my channel, right? I'm like some other SQL Server channels. So uh, you, can, you can watch these things uninterrupted. And uh, if, if, you would, if you would like to hire me for consulting, well, I mean, you, you, you know my name. You know, you know my, that my name is my website, uh, and you can always get in touch with me that way. All right, great, cool. Now we've, we've done all our plugs at the end because I'm an idiot and I should do it at the beginning, but you know. Can't teach an old dog new, new dogs. All right, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you for watching.